Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I'm going to port the CB Radio VFO code from the Raspberry Pi Pico to an Arduino Pro Mini. <laughs> The CB Radio VFO I created in this video works great. I have had it installed in my Cobra 21 for almost 5 months and it is still working perfectly. Someone recently gave me a CB with a faulty LED channel display, so I decided to try putting a VFO in it and replacing the display with the VFO's OLED. I checked the parts bin and found I was out of Raspberry Pi Picos. So for the sake of using what I have, I decided to port the code for the VFO to another microcontroller. The microcontroller I decided to use is the Arduino Pro Mini. Since I have viewers from places with different standards for CB radio than we have here in the US, I decided this would be a great time to modify the new port to make it have roughly the same band range as the old export radios that used to be common. The frequency range of this VFO is 26.055 MHz to 28.305 MHz. After using my previous VFO, I decided that a new version would use an encoder instead of push buttons to change the frequency. If you make and use this VFO, please check the local laws and regulations to ensure you are not transmitting on a frequency or in a mode that is prohibited. To start, I created a build drawing as seen here. I used perfboard and wired everything point to point just like the drawing. Once it was assembled, I inspected it for short circuits, then tried running a couple of diagnostic sketches. First, I ran an I2C port scanner, similar to the one in this video, but designed for one I2C port. The results were good, and the identifying addresses for the display and the SI5351 were both written to the serial port. Next, I tried an example sketch for the SSD1306 display, then one for the SI5351. They each worked great. Then I tossed some code together to read the encoder and output the results to the serial port. This worked as well. So the next step with working hardware was to start porting the code. Porting the code from the Raspberry Pi Pico to the Arduino Pro Mini turned out to be quite a challenge. First, I had developed the code to use both cores of the Pi Pico. I also used two I2C ports giving the display and the SI5351 each their own data bus. This meant a lot of the code was split between setup, setup1, loop, and loop1. I moved all of the setup1 code into setup and I moved all of the loop 1 code into loop. Then I set both devices to use wire, removing a device from wire 1. After these changes, it seemed to run fine. The display worked, and the SI5351 output the appropriate frequency. But there were still a lot of changes to be made. The next step was to add the encoder. I wrote a function to handle the encoder at first without interrupts, just to see if it would work with the menu and channel selection controls. When I uploaded the sketch to the Arduino, the upload would go fine, but the Pro Mini would not display anything. After trying a lot of things and double checking the hardware with the diagnostic method I used before, I found the problem. The sketch and libraries seemed to be too much for the Arduino Pro Mini and a conflict was occurring. I'm not sure what the exact conflict was, but all I'm certain of is that when the sketch would take more than 80% of available space, the program would not run. So I stripped the menu system and simplified the code so all the options need to be set in the source code before upload to the board. This got everything working. Of course the encoder was inconsistent because I was not using interrupts. I added the pin change interrupt to port C, masked it for pin 0 and 1 which are analog pin 0 and analog pin 1. Then I renamed the encoder function as the appropriate interrupt service routine. Once the encoder was working, I modified the code to display the frequency channel and set the VFO frequency. I added the ability to reach RC or radio control channels. I then changed the channel limits to allow access to the export bands. A few more tests and it seemed to be working as it should. You can find this VFO packaged with the Pico VFO in a zip file on my website, circuitsecrets.com. In the next video, I will attempt to install this VFO into a CB radio. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.